This week on Project Freelance, we're talking about urban exploring, one of my favorite topics of all time. If you don't know, my name is Kay Anagonio, and I like to explore abandoned places. That's what I do when I'm not freelancing for people, but when I am freelancing for people, I try to get them to use abandoned places as the backdrops for the project that we're working on together, because I love abandoned places. So, I wanted to talk with another urban explorer on this podcast. I wanted to chat with Dalton. He hit me up on Instagram. He photographed the Joliet State Penitentiary. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. This guy is super into urban exploring. He's a photographer and he has photographed Joliet inside and out tons of times. He knows this place like the back of his hand. I want to go out to Illinois just so I can go like hang out with this guy and shoot around with this guy and explore some of these places with him because this guy knows the spots. He had a post go super viral and get like 50,000 views in a day. Absolutely amazing. And I wanted to talk to him not only about urban exploring, but this guy also works for Travel Channel. He's a freelancer for Travel Channel, and I would love to also work for Travel Channel. It would be absolutely amazing to do anything with them. I tagged them in a ton of my posts because I really, I want them to see who I am. I want them to know who I am. I think I actually just pitched a like TV series idea to them. And they were like, oh, we're not really looking for that at this time, but uh, thank you. But it's okay, Travel Channel. I'm coming for you. We're going to work together at some point. But this guy's doing it. That's why I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to know how he got in touch with them, how he started working with them, what he's doing with them, what he wants to do with them, where he's going, and some of the plans that he has to, you know, create content for Travel Channel and for himself. So, I don't want to, you know, introduce him too much because he's going to talk to you guys for the next 40 minutes. But if you're new to the podcast, please hit that subscribe button every Monday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Unless for some reason SoundCloud decides not to post on time like it did last week. I'm sorry about that, guys. I am super sorry about that. I don't know what happened. It was supposed to post. It didn't post. And I noticed it at noon. So you got it on your lunch break, which is even better than in the morning. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah. Go ahead and do me a favor, stop what you're doing, scroll down to whatever app you're on, and give this a rating. Give it a rating, guys. Leave it some feedback. I will read your feedback on the podcast, so you should definitely leave some feedback and make it funny so that I can read it on the podcast and make people laugh, because people love to laugh, especially in the morning at 7 a.m. Yeah. If you want to support me, head over to patreon.com slash just the letter K. Over there, you can help support my content that I make on youtube.com slash just the letter K, as well as this podcast, as well as just the letter K.com. And all the things that I do, you get access to early content, exclusive content, photo prints, discounts to merchandise, and Skype calls. So many things. So many good things. So yeah, if you want to support me, do me a favor, head over there. You can support me with as little as a dollar per video. Thank you in advance, and to those of you that do support me, thank you guys so much. You are seriously taking my content to the next level, and I can't wait to make more content for you. So, without further ado, let's talk to Dalton a little bit. Let's talk about exploring prisons. Let's talk about exploring insane asylums. Let's talk about haunted places. Let's just talk. Dalton, take it away. All right, well, I am uh, I'm Dalton. I go by Dalton DB. Pretty much anything, it kind of depends on what project I'm working on. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. I shoot freelance photography. I also shoot for Travel Channel and a couple other odds and ends that I can't really say yet. Um, My day job, I'm a security officer. I deal with uh, psychiatric and addicted patients in a hospital, which is always fun. Um, I've been a body piercer, I work in haunted houses, like I do photography, so I'm kind of a jack of all trades. So let's talk about how we started talking and what our mutual interest was uh, about urban exploration and that kind of stuff. Yes, um, I've been doing it since 2015 or 2016, I can't remember off the top of my head, and... The Joliet Prison was actually the very first place I ever shot photography. And it was, I don't really want to say it was a fluke, but it was a little bit of a fluke because I I shot it and within 24 hours I had 50,000 views on it. So, it yeah, it it exploded. I didn't really expect it. And I just kind of, I mean, everyone loved it and wanted more. So I've just continually started doing more and more. And that led to, obviously, Travel Channel and... 
some other cool places, and that's actually, I've been listening to your music and following you on YouTube and all that for, I don't know, quite a while. So then I saw you start getting into the urban exploration and stuff, so I definitely wanted to hook up with you and do some work with you. So talk to me a little bit about Travel Channel. How did this come about? Like, how did you, first of all, how did you get in touch with them? How did they find you? Like, how did that that connection come to be? Uh, they actually found me. I didn't even consider talking to them. Uh, they're working on producing a new paranormal show, which should be out, if I remember right, this fall. Uh, I can't really say too much about it yet, because wonderful confidentiality uh, agreements. Uh, it's some paranormal show. I I don't even have a ton of information on it because I've been kind of hush hush with a lot of it, which I'm totally fine with. I can care less. But uh, they're doing that. They wanted a bunch of photography for the Peoria State Hospital, which is in central Illinois. It was one of the biggest mental wards in the state, actually. And then it was also a TV hospital. Uh, unfortunately, it got demolished, I think it was last summer, the main building. I mean, there's still some buildings and cemeteries and whatnot, but the main building was destroyed and they needed pictures of it. Well, I just happened to have an entire post about it, and they found me and loved my stuff, and I've been shooting for them ever since. Wow. Uh, I love shooting with them. What are some of the other projects you've worked on with them? Uh, that's the main one. There's been some other just, like, stock photography stuff. Nothing, nothing that exciting. Most of the stuff has been, uh, anything from paranormal stuff, haunted stuff, abandoned stuff. I'm trying to get them to do a thing on the Joliet prison now. Um, I'm going to Chernobyl this fall. I'm going to spend, I think, two weeks out there. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get them to pay for it completely, but I don't know if that'll happen. Yeah. So I'm going there, and then I'm working on going to Fukushima in the spring to shoot where the nuclear disaster was a few years ago, because not many people have been able to get into there. They've kind of kept it closed off, but through a friend of a friend, I think I can get into there, which would be really cool. And then I'm trying to go to Mongolia next fall. There's this huge city they built. It's supposed to be like the new Beijing, and there's only like a thousand people that live there. So this huge, yeah, it's called, uh, oh, Orodos, I believe, if I remember right. It's this huge city in Mongolia, and it just, they've never really done anything with it. So it's, like I said, it's this huge city, and there's hardly anybody there. So they have all these buildings and everything, and they're sitting there. What? I gotta know more about this place. Yeah, it's called, uh, Orodos, O-R-D-O-S. I'm looking at it. It's pretty much, it. yeah. They they label it as a ghost town. They do. There's, wow. There's some it people says there, but... the world's largest abandoned city. Yeah. Wow, dude, can you imagine flying a drone through this place? I'm I'm gonna hope to. Oh crop. my god, this is crazy. Okay, for those that are listening to this, you guys gotta go down and just go Google it. Go Google this place. It looks absolutely insane. It looks like a like a video game background. Like it almost looks a lot like uh, movie or it looks a lot like North Korea. It looks like Pyongyang really yeah. closely. Wow, that's crazy! Wow. Yeah, Thanks so for sharing I wanna, that with me. I, yeah, I had I, no idea. I'm hoping to get over there, and then this summer I have God, probably 15 or 20 spots that I'm shooting in between here, and I live in Chicago land. From here to pretty much the East Coast, I've got. Uh, Waverly Hills Sanatorium down in Kentucky, which is, everybody knows that place. It's huge and just, it's creepy old insane asylum. So I've got that. I've got uh, the Ohio State, um, I want to say prison. I know it's not the right word. It's where they shot um, Shawshank Redemption. I've got the Eastern State Penitentiary, which you were just at, I saw. Yeah. Be out there. Uh, where else am I going? Going to Centralia in Pennsylvania. I'm going to the town that uh, the Legend of the Mothman originated. So I'm I'm traveling quite a bit this summer just to kind of just freelance some stuff and 
that other stuff I've been invited to shoot, so I figure I should probably go do it before it gets revoked. So do you sell your stock photography online other than, like, to Travel Channel? Like, do you do, like, Adobe Stock or anything like that? Uh, I've been looking into it. I don't yet. I was actually looking into it today, nonetheless. I have an affiliate code, so I can help you out. So I'll help that, you out with that. Get you a uh, discount. Yeah. Uh, hey, I like discounts. Yeah, man, I have a goal to sell, like, fo- like $4,000 of stock footage this year. That's, like, my goal. And it's, like... It's so saturated, the market, but, I mean, if you have great images and great video, like, people will buy it, you know? Yeah. I know I've had a lot of people that want to buy stuff from the Joliet Correctional Center. I just, I've been so busy with different stuff lately that I haven't been through it to upload any yet. So, when it comes to freelancing for companies like Travel Channel, like, what are your, do you have any, like projects that you want to do other than the ones you kind of mentioned like do you have like bigger projects that you want to like pitch to them uh obviously chernobyl that's a huge one because that's i mean everybody knows what it is knows what happened if you don't i mean it was back in 1986 they were trying to do some some testing on some fail safe mechanisms and they ended up shutting off a bunch of safety stuff that they weren't supposed to and ended up blowing up the nuclear plant. So, I mean, that's, I'm, when I go, I'm going to get to go off the beaten path. I don't have to, because I'm doing a private tour, so I'm not going to stay with the normal people, which is really cool. I actually get to go to the reactor and stuff, so I get to go to more, but that's because I just, you know, you know the right people, you can get in places. Right, especially when it so, comes to this community. Yes, uh, other projects, I'm really trying to get them with this, uh, I also run a podcast where I interview serial killers and forensic people and whatnot. I would love for them to pick that up if that keeps going well, because everybody seems interested in serial killers anymore, so, I mean, it's kind of a, it's a big market they could do, they just have to be careful with it and market it right. Is there anything you are hesitant to ask a serial killer has there been anything that you've like wanted to ask somebody that like you're you're just like on the fence about like maybe i shouldn't ask them this <laughs> no the i mean the handful of them that i've interviewed so far they're extremely open i've really had no i mean i'll ask they'll tell me you know how they rape and murder people and i mean they're they're pretty open usually i mean there's a couple that have been they don't really want to talk about it and you know most of them, you can draw it out from them. It's just, you kind of have to build a little trust. That's why it takes, you know, I usually do like one episode a month because it takes so long to set it up with these people. Because you got to kind of build a little trust. You got to learn what the quirks are and you have to do all this through snail mail. And that usually if I send a letter today, I might have a response in two or three weeks. So, I mean, it it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, but... I get to interview some of the cool people that I never would have thought I would interview. And what are some of your like inspirations? Like, did you watch paranormal state back in the day? Have you watched like, you know, like true crime? Like what, what are your inspirations when it comes to the type of content you make? When it comes to that, this all kind of, I mean, I've always been interested in crime, you know, what makes people tick? Why did they do it? What happened? And then working with the photography stuff, I mean, I'm running into more and more of that, like the Joliet Correctional Center. I mean, they held Gacy, they held the Babyface Killer, they held so many of these historic, not really historic, these infamous people. I want to know, you know, I want to get inside their head. Why did you do it? You know, what was your experience like while you were locked up here? Obviously, there's some you can't ask that because they've been executed. So it's kind of, I want to get to these people before they either die or get executed, which I guess Illinois doesn't execute people, so I don't really have to worry about that, but a lot of these infamous killers are in their 70s and 80s, so it's it's just a matter of time. I want to get the story out there for the future so it doesn't just get swept under the rug. Yeah, essentially you're creating a dialogue of history that's going to live on after these people die, you know, and it, this could yeah. be their last chance to, like, say their story, like, tell their part of the story or whatever. Exactly, and that's that's something I'm doing. Once, once each one's done with an interview, obviously I have you know letters from them back and forth. I'm trying to put it together in a book once I'm done, or once I get more. Because I mean, seeing correspondence firsthand and you know what goes on in the prison every day, you know, that stuff it, it interests a lot of people. And I've had a lot of requests to do something similar. It's just 
like I said, it takes a long time, and then yeah, I have to get them to agree to me putting the letters out there, because not all of them like that. Some of them are very private people, and I mean, some of them refuse to talk to me or, you know, let me use anything about them. I've gotten quite a few responses, and some of them are just me. You know, one of them I got, literally all it says was, fuck you. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm not interviewing you. That's that's great. <laughs> Oh my God. And what, what makes your, or like, what are you going to do when you go to Chernobyl? Cause I'm sure you've seen, you know, vlogs where people go and they do the tours and the things like that. Cause there are tours that do go through Chernobyl that are kind of known. So what, what specifically will make your content different? Like what, how are you going to make the story different other than your access? No, I'd say access, that's going to be a huge one. Cause I mean, if you can get in places that other people can't, you're going to have, shots that nobody's been able to recreate. My big thing is the history. I love the history behind all these places. So that's my main focus. I want to, you know, what each building was, what went on there. You know, there's a lot of them, obviously like the school and the, what do I want to talk about? The Ferris wheel, stuff like that. Everybody knows, but I want to go to the underground stuff that people didn't know about and kind of bring that to light. Cause I mean, this is a huge city and now it's empty. So there's gotta be stuff that, people haven't been showing definitely and would you host something like this or would you do camera like what would you what would be your your t- part of it uh mostly i'd be i mean obviously i shoot photography so that's right. my big thing um i'm kind of open i'm contemplating having another person or two come with just to capture i mean if you have five different people they're gonna come back with five different pictures it's it's all perspective and i mean it's not like it's an hour away it takes a long time to get there and it's not it's not super expensive it's not cheap either so i want to make sure when i do do it everything's done right i don't have to you know do oh i wish i would have taken this and then have to go back because like i said it's expensive and it's a long way to get to so i want to make sure that i kind of get it all in one go which is gonna take a lot because i mean that that city and then the surrounding cities are all abandoned it's it's just enormous. And then there's actually still people that live there. So I want to make sure I get to meet up with them and interview them. Cause that's, they've lived there since it had its meltdown. So that's, they have to have some stories that are cool. Oh yeah. They probably know the details of the day it happened and you know, where everybody went and like, they were probably super young then. So I can't, yeah. like, I can't only imagine what their stories could be. Yeah. I mean, living in a nuclear wasteland your entire life, that's, that's something most people never even dream of. Yeah, it's quite a science experiment. <laughs> yeah, I, which is funny because I actually live literally in, be- three, in between three nuclear plants. I have three of them within like 10 miles of my house. No way. Are they in like a, yeah. like in a triangle? <laughs> yep. Yeah, literally there's they're in a triangle around me. Nuclear so plants I'm, are so crazy looking. I can't, I can't yeah. even. That's insane. I mean, we have... Which is weird, because right next to them, we have, like, refineries, we have a plastic plant. I mean, we have, if one of these go, all of them's going to go. It's just a matter of, I think it's a matter of when. Oh, absolutely. So what drew you to photography? Like, what was your inspiration for that? Um, I've always liked photography. I've never really, I never really did a ton with it. So it's kind of, I, I don't really want to say I needed a hobby. I needed something to do. I was bored, and I wanted to do something different. So I picked up photography i've been self-taught my entire time i've been you know i learned from different photographers i shoot with them so like i said i was just taking them like okay you know i'll go to the prison it's historic do you know a historic background take some pictures i expected it to be you know maybe my friends will look at it i didn't expect you know fifty thousand views in 24 hours that was it blew me away i'm like oh okay people actually like this so i mean that's that's been my big thing is I love the historical aspect. I want to shoot all these places before they do get torn down because there's a lot of them that I've shot that they don't exist anymore, which is a shame. But I mean, at the same time, these buildings were built, you know, a hundred, 150 years ago. Not, it's not always viable to save them. Man, I I'm wish thinking it was, about, but... I'm thinking about starting like an urban exploration museum, you know, like somehow getting like a piece of these places before they're torn down and just having this giant collection of, 
pieces from these like iconic buildings that we explore you know like how would we'd have to like ask the city like hey can we take like the stained glass out of this church before you tear it down like <laughs> it's actually it's kind of cool you mentioned that uh the Joliet Correctional Center actually has a area of it called the Burn District it's where I don't know there's like half a dozen buildings that people set on fire and they burned well a group of local artists have actually gotten permission they've gone in there and taken what they wanted and they'll make artwork about the prison from pieces of the prison. That's super cool. What are they called? They have, um, it is the... Give me one second. Let me find it. It's the Burn District Artist, I believe. Because I know right now at the uh, Historical Museum in Joliet, they have this huge display, and it's awesome. Glass work to... Uh, old hollowed out TVs. I mean, they have so much stuff and it's, it's stuff that nobody else would ever use. It would have just sat there forever. That is unreal, man. What a cool idea. You know what I, like, I, I've been thinking about it a lot recently. Like there's like, just like you were saying, there's a lot of places I've been that are no longer there that don't exist anymore. And like, I wish, I wish I had like a piece of them, you know, we have the photos and all that, but I wish we had, and, and, you know, I'm all about, like, leave no trace, like, don't take anything, don't leave anything like that. But at the same time, I feel like we need to have another way to remember this stuff. Exactly. And, you know, like the, I know I come back to the Joliet Correctional Center a lot because I'm I mean, one of my home favorite places. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Uh, they're actually working on renovating it to turn it into a big museum slash they have a whole ton of stuff they want to do with it, but they're trying to restore it back to what it was because they had such a problem with people. They're just breaking in left and right and obviously setting stuff on fire and destroying stuff. And it was just becoming, it was a huge hazard. I mean, this place isn't exactly, not exactly safe. I mean, there's floors falling in. They it closed in 2003. Pretty much they locked the gate and just left it, you know, it set for years. So, I mean, they have, there's anything from prison records there to x-ray machines, furniture. I mean, everything was just left there. So it's really cool. I mean, they have a ton of stuff, but that also makes it extremely unsafe because, I mean, anything from asbestos to lead to the floors falling in, it's, you really have to be careful there. So it's kind of, it's, it's a work in progress. I mean, the city of Joliet, the Joliet Historical Museum have done a phenomenal job with fixing it up so far. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot more to go. Like right now, you can't go in the cell houses. You can't go in certain parts of the hospital. I mean, there's a lot that's kind of off limits, which I was I was extremely lucky. All last winter, I got to shoot. Pretty much they opened the doors and say, here you go, have fun. So I got to see, I literally have pretty much every square inch of that place photographed because, I mean, when you spend five and six hours a day there, you learn to get around and learn to shoot everything i mean but yeah i mean it's it's totally worth it if no one's ever been there to go do a tour i mean they did the blues brothers there they did prison break there i mean those are everybody knows those those are huge so it's really cool to go through we've been working on uh shooting photography like everywhere where prison break was and showing that scene from the show and then what it looks like now i've done the same with blues brothers i've shot you know the cell joliet jake was in I've shot the cells that Gacy was in and Henry Briz. I mean, I've shot where all these people have stayed, and now I have pictures of them. So it's been it's been really cool. Has is there like a favorite place that you've been so far I, I, in all your explorations? Is it Joliet Prison or is there another one? Yeah, def- definitely the prison. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it it'll always be kind of home to me. It was the first place I shot, and then like I said, it turned into this big ordeal. So it's really cool to be able to go back there and then get open access to it. Cause I said, it's, it's near and dear to me. I mean, there's some cool, I've seen, uh, like bachelor's Grove cemetery by Chicago. It's one of the most haunted cemeteries in the world. I've been there. Oxable cemetery, which is actually closer to me. Another super haunted cemetery. Uh, Gary, Indiana has a lot of cool places. Really. Gary, just Indiana care- is completely haunted. That whole place. Oh yeah. It's, I've been, God, I've been to so many places there and it, you just have to be really careful because like Gary, it's, it's a really unsafe city. 
there's a lot of you really have to be careful. I mean, even when I went, I mean, it's no secret I have firearm permits, so, so I can carry when I'm out and about like that. But even the police before I went out there told me, you know, if you're not carrying a firearm, don't come out here. Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, this is this makes me feel safe, which. Like I said, I didn't care. It's it's like putting my keys in my pocket. It's a normal thing for me, but the fact that they'll say, you know, yeah, be very careful. It's like, oh, great. This is this is going to be fun. Yeah, like you know you're going to actually have a an interesting experience no matter what kind of day it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, the actually, the very first time I shot Joliet, I had a drunk guy, and he was going to pull a knife on me because it's, it's not in the best of neighborhoods, but... He was just, he was trying to take me inside for a private tour because he'd been locked up there and he was absolutely insane. But, and I looked him up and he really was locked up there. So there's nothing, he's, he was locked up in there for a rape and murder. I'm like, oh, great. You want to <laughs> take me inside? This is safe. He wanted to take you inside at knife point. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've always been very careful after that. I mean, most of the time I shoot these places alone because. It's just kind of my, I have a very weird sleep schedule, so when most people are sleeping, I'm awake. So I've, I just, I shoot a lot of them alone. I don't really worry about it, because I'm not a small man. I mean, I'm 6'8 and 250 pounds. What? I'm a big guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a large man. <laughs> Damn. So if somebody's really going to take me, I'm, I'm impressed. Wow. Yeah, you are basically like a walking pit bull. <laughs> yeah. Pretty that's much. awesome. That's awesome. So talk a little bit more about social media and how that's kind of played a role in your uh, continued growth as a freelancer. Uh, that social media, that's that's my bread and butter. I mean, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't still be shooting it. Uh, that actually, social media actually led me back to getting into the prison. It was kind of a fluke. I found another photographer that he had open access to it. He's like, hey, do you want to come out? Well, yeah, I mean, of course I want to come out. And I actually still shoot with him every time we're out there. He's a phenomenal photographer. But, I mean, even something similar or as little as that, I've gotten to, I've met so many different photographers and learned so much from them just from, you know, a single Facebook post. So, I mean, stuff like that, it's huge. Uh, obviously, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're all huge tools. I mean, you just have to learn how to how to tag and how to market. That's that's the biggest thing. I mean, my stuff, I've had it reposted by so many different sites at this point that honestly, I don't even keep track anymore. Because people steal them and they're like, oh, you know, so-and-so, go check this out. It's like, okay. And I'll see it randomly and it's like, wait, that's my work. I'll be scrolling through, it'll be, you know, like abandoned places you can't visit, and I'll be scrolling. I'm like, hey, this is my, this is my work. Why is it on here? How did this get here? Who took this? Yeah. What, what is happening? And I've had times I'll message them like, um, yeah, that's my pictures, guys. And they're like, oh, I'm like, well, are you going to, you know, give me credit? Well, I guess we could. It's like, um, well, yeah, you can. <laughs> you're welcome for the photo of the place you're talking about, man. Yeah, it's like, you're welcome, uh, give me credit, or my attorney will come find you. I mean, I don't care either way, but let me know so I know what I'm doing. Yeah, seriously. And that, I mean, speaking of attorneys and photos and, you know, copyright and things like that, Ariana Grande just, you know, had a, she's in the the middle of a lawsuit right now. Somebody on, uh, she posted a photo of someone's on Instagram, a photo of her that somebody else took. And didn't credit them, and now that person's going after her because it got like three million likes. So uh, talk a little bit about the the seriousness about that, because I mean that's something real that we seriously have to deal with, and people don't get like you need to credit your artist. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've had stuff stolen from. I mean, like I said, all these random pages, and then I find it, and it's like, hey, you know, give me credit. And I've had some of those straight up tell me no, and it's like you can't just tell me no. I'm like that. That's my stuff. Or they'll. I always have. I have my normal watermark. I also have a hidden watermark in every picture. And I mean, unless you're me, you're never going to find it. So I'll be able to tell even if they took out my big watermark. I know exactly where to look. So I've caught a lot that way. I keep an attorney on retainer at all times just just for this stuff. I mean, 
you never know when you're going to need it. I'd rather have them pretty much at my beck and call than not have them. I mean, I don't want to have to, I don't ever want to have to sue anyone over something like that. Cause that's, that's not why I'm in it. Uh, you know, I love to share the pictures, but you know, give me credit. That's, I, I just don't know why you'd steal a picture and not do it. I mean, I've even had people like students, I'll let them use my work all the time for, you know, different reports and stuff. Cause I mean, it's helping them get an education. Why would I not do that? I mean, they're, if I can help a student in need, absolutely. They can take any picture they want, but you know, if you're not a student, I'm a little less forgiving sometimes. That's amazing that you have a hidden a hidden watermark in your photos. Talk about that because some people may not know what that is or how to do that. So a watermark for, I'm assuming a lot of your listeners know what it is. It's pretty much every photographer has their own special watermark. Mine actually, I run a website called Abandoned Whereabouts. Mine actually says Abandoned Whereabouts and there's like a, a spotlight behind it. Well, I put that on every picture. I actually have a program that I just upload all the pictures and it automatically puts it wherever I want. So that way I don't have to go through every picture and put it on. It just mass does it. Well, then I have a hidden one, which I just, I adjust the transparency so far down that unless you know where it's at, I can blend it in real good and you'll, you'll never see it. So that, that takes a little bit of time because I actually have to go through each one and figure out, you know, where am I going to hide this at and where's the best spot? Cause I don't want to ruin the picture. But in case somebody crops it, I want to be able to tell it's mine. So it's just been, really, it's just trial and error. You get used to putting them in. I have I have a bunch of different templates, so usually I can just go through a template and put it in, you know, obviously one by one. But it's just like I said, trial and error. That's it. I just want to be able to ensure that I get credit and I can recognize my work, which usually, usually I don't have to look for the watermark because... I could look at the picture and tell you whether or not it's mine. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course. I mean, but I think we all know our, a good idea. We know our own styles. We know what to look for. Yeah, we know our photos when we see them, definitely. So talk about Abandoned Whereabouts a little bit. Talk about why you created that website and what, what's on that website, the type of content that's on there, and uh, what people can kind of find when they go to that website. Uh, that website, that is my primary photography website. It's pretty much literally all abandoned places. We have anywhere from, uh, like I said, the Bachelors Grove Cemetery, Oxable Cemetery, the Peoria State Hospital. We have Joliet Correctional. All of those, you can find pictures of that. And then there's obviously there's links to like the podcast I run on it. There's galleries of odds and ends. I mean, I think from abandoned houses, abandoned stores, we get, God, I get emails all the time. People saying, oh, hey, you should go shoot this. Oh, okay. We'll go shoot that. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of recommendations from people, which has been incredibly helpful. Uh, I created it, like I said, it's it was kind of a fluke. I made it to put my photography on, just kind of a side project. I was bored. It's like, okay, you know, let's put it up, and that's that's where the fifty thousand views and one day came from. I'm like, oh, okay. And ever since then, like I said, I average. It depends on the day. Usually about a thousand views a day, give or take, which, yeah, obviously lately it's been a little bit more because I've kind of been, I've been advertising a lot more lately. I've been off of surgery recovery, so I've kind of been just laying around. It's like, okay, I, I should probably work on this. So talk about your advertising methods and uh, how you're promoting this and marketing it and making money off the website. Um. Believe it or not, I actually don't make anything off the website, which kind of sucks. But at the same time, I I didn't start it for the web for money. It was just something I enjoyed doing, and I think it cost me like a hundred bucks a year to keep. It's it's not a ton. Uh, marketing, really, it's all about. Especially Instagram is my main one. You have to learn what hashtags to use on what's going to bring the most viewers to your page. Obviously, you know, take Joliet Correctional. There's you know. I'll tag Blues Brothers in it, Prison Break, you know, Haunted, Prisons, stuff like that. But I also, I always go to a news site and see what's trending. Because whatever's trending, people are going to check it. So I'll purposely put, you know, say it's Kim Kardashian is today. 
for like an hour, I'll leave the Kim Kardashian tag on there, and then I'll delete it out. And I'll check again later, and it may be, you know, you know, say Trump. So you'll put a tag on that, and it'll bring people to it. So it's all just, you kind of got to learn. Yeah, I mean, whatever's popular, obviously, you're going to want to tag it, but I won't leave the tags on there for, you know, days, because obviously, I like, you know, Kim Kardashian, I could care less. I If she walked up to me today and said hi, I wouldn't know who she is. So, you know, it's not like I support them or know who they are, but, you know, it brings views in. So that's a big one. You just got to kind of keep watching the news and see what's trending, and that's how you can bring more people in. And then, obviously, Halloween time and in the fall, my views always go up because, I mean, everyone's looking for the haunted, creepy places to check out on Halloween. So it's always great to see that. And I do, I usually do a little heavier advertising at that time just because I know that I'll get two or three times the views that I usually would, which it's kind of hard because, like I said, I work in haunted houses too. So trying to juggle that, my day job and this is, I swear, I live on a computer and in my car for pretty much the entire month of October. And why why are you so into haunted houses? What got you into that? What got you into the spooky and the scary and the, the horror and the darker side of exploration? Uh, well, haunted houses, I actually, the town I grew up in had a haunted house for years. And that's actually, I started when we, I was in eighth grade, and we had to have, 20 hours of service hours to graduate. That's just some program they have. Like, okay. Well, I did mine at the haunted house and I fell in love with it. So I've been, I've literally since I was in eighth grade and I mean, now I'm 25. I've done it every year since. So obviously I'm not at the same haunted house. I've bounced around here and there, but that's been literally my job for a long time. I do anything from, costume design, to makeup, to acting, to advertising. I mean, once again, kind of a jack-of-all-trades in that, but it's been absolutely phenomenal. I get to go to St. Louis every year as a giant like haunted house trade show, which Sick. is literally, you go down, it's literally all, you know, the new props for the year, the new masks. <laughs> you can buy pretty much anything you can see is for sale. So I always spend way too much, you know. I get a nice suite in one of the hotels and stuff, and it's kind of like my... Kind of like my playground of, you know, it's my one once a year that I get to just go do whatever I want. And it's it's a lot of fun. I, I love going down there. This year they have another one in Chicago, so I'm kind of curious to see to see how that'll work out. But, I mean, even if you come in my apartment, it's literally decorated with haunted house props. Wow, that's amazing, man. And what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started either photography or freelancing or your jobs, anything like that? Uh, definitely photography is bracketing. Bracketing has made my life, my picture so much better. It takes a lot more time. I don't know if you do bracketing at all. I do not. So essentially what it is, like my camera, I can do up to nine shots at once, and it'll vary all the settings. So it may have it from, you know, the darkest of spectrum to super bright, and then you can merge them all together or later. So then you'll have, you'll have so much more detail in your pictures, so you're going to have Literally everything from the darkest setting to the lightest all into one picture. So it's an so it HDR shot, essentially. Yeah. So that, it helps a ton. Obviously, you know, like my camera, I can do up to nine. I, I never do nine shots because, A, I don't want to have to store all the pictures. And the difference between, usually I do five shots. The difference between five and nine, it's not enough to buy extra hard drives or anything. So I, I stick to the five, but that was one of the main things that I learned Actually, last year I learned it from one of the guys I shoot with the prison. And my photography work has come so far since then. It's I kind of look at some of my old pictures and it's like, oh God, why did I take those? <laughs> I think we all kind of go through that. I definitely do when it comes to my mu- my live m- my live music photography. I look at my old stuff and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I took that photo and put my watermark on it and then yep. put it on the internet. <laughs> I know, that's what... I look like the old prison pictures from, you know, yep. five years ago. And it's like, oh, God. Yeah. Like those are ter- and I've kind of been replacing, you know, take one off, edit it, and put it back. and making them better, but I don't want to delete them at the same time. Because, I mean, that's, that was that's my history. first one. So it's like, okay, yeah. I'll keep it. But, yeah, it's learning Photoshop and Photoshop and Lightroom and all that has been incredibly helpful. You're, it's amazing how much you can change by, you know, 
tweaking a little bit of here and a little bit there. Yeah, and for those listening, you can go online and watch a tutorial on how to do pretty much anything. I mean, there are great resources out there. So tell people where they can find you and uh, what you're up to right now. I mean, we know what you're up to in the future, but if you want to kind of just wrap it up and tell people where they can find you. Sure. Um, obviously, I was Dalton. You can find me. I have so many different spots. Uh, my main one is AbandonedWhereabouts.com. I mean, then on, if you go on there, there's links to the Facebook page, the Instagram. There's links on there to my podcast, which is Behind the Bars podcast. I, we, I mean, we interview serial killers. I mean, cops from the cases. Tomorrow, I'm actually interviewing the, I don't want to get her name or her title. I believe it's the forensic psychologist from the John Wayne Gacy case. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that one. So, I mean, we're giving, we have a lot of interviews like that. Uh, people from the Browns Chicken Massacre. I'm in talks with a couple people from the Manson family. I'm in talk with uh, the guy who shot John Lennon. So, I mean, there's a lot coming. Just be patient. So, really, I mean, the website's the best way, mainly because there's links on everything. So, go to the website, check it out. Uh, subscribe, leave comments. If you have somewhere you want us to shoot, let us know. And yeah, that that's that's pretty much me. I don't really have a ton going on right now. Like I said, I had surgery, so it's kind of been kind of been laid up for a few weeks. But I'm getting better, so I'm hoping, hopefully, in June, I can do some traveling and shoot some new stuff. All right, man. Thank you for uh, coming on the podcast and talking to me a little bit more about you know urban exploration and photography. I appreciate your time. Ab- absolutely. Thanks for having me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast with Dalton. I had a blast talking to him. I I love getting to geek out about, you know, urban exploring. I don't get to talk about it enough, and I wish I could talk about it more. So I'm going to have a couple more urban explorers come onto the podcast and talk to you guys about their photography, their video work, and the content they create, because it's something I really enjoy talking about. I also blog about it at justtheletterk.com. And Dalton, I think that we should swap blogs And I should have you do a guest blog on my blog and I'll do a guest blog on your blog. And then we can just like guest blog it up. I've never done a guest blog, but it sounds like something fun. And I would love to be a part of that with you because I, you know, a band whereabouts, that's pretty tight. I I dig it. So if you're into that, let me know. I don't know. I guess I could have asked you, but I'm going to ask you now. So that means you're going to have to listen to this podcast. Do me a favor, give this podcast a rating. Let me know what you think about it. Give it give it some feedback. It takes like 30 seconds for you to leave a rating down below. So go ahead and do that. And I thank you in advance. And I'll read your rating. I'll read it. If you write a little blurb like we're Yelp, I'll read it on the podcast, you guys. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys next week on the podcast. Follow me on social media at Project Freelance on Twitter and Instagram. And when there's a public Facebook group where you can post your work, that you were working on every week. Just go post on there. Join the group. Thank you. Appreciate you. You're the best. I'll talk to you later.